Hey, hi all. This is Sovan. I welcome you all to my channel P2P Learning. That is peer to peer learning. Here we try to learn from others' experiences. Okay. So now today my guest is Aditya. Aditya Khare. So he is a very close friend of mine. He he has established himself on his own. Okay. He is a self made man. Uh, we will listen to his story from his mouth only. Okay. So hey, hi Aditya. Thanks a lot for joining this call, man. Yeah. Thank you, Sovan. First of all, thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My pleasure, my pleasure, Aditya. So, Aditya, we would like to understand your entire journey, your your childhood, your your educational background, your career path, and everything. And also, I I know that you have a very interesting career. I knew that, like you were into uh, uh, central PSU, and then you did your uh, management from IIM Indore, and then now you are actually working in a very emerging uh, space like electric vehicle. So I know that, but I think I think it will be great if you can just narrate your story and if you can just uh, give the I mean your your live experiences to others as that they can also learn from you. They can got got encouraged from your story and also they can follow your path. And obviously, if you can help them in any way, just mention that how you can help them in you in their career or in their uh, path entire journey. Okay, so over to you. Aditya, can you just start from your childhood? So, like, how was your childhood? From your how, where you were born and brought up, and then your schooling, your college, and any, any uh, interesting event in this entire period till your college. Yeah, sure. So, I'll start from my childhood. So, I was born and brought up in Jabalpur, Madhya Pradesh. So, those of you who don't know Jabalpur, so if you take the map of India and put your finger in the center, so that is where Jabalpur is. so my schooling and my college education was done from jabalpur only so my schooling was done from state board state board school and it was totally hindi medium school and then i did my engineering from jabalpur engineering college so jabalpur engineering college is also one of the oldest college in central india it, it started before independence so i did my engineering my mechanical engineering from 2004 to 2008 and uh, so tcs was the first company which came for placement in our college and so i got placed in tcs through college placement and for few months uh, close to around 10 11 months i worked in tcs uh, but uh, it was mostly training and some initial projects so i was not very much involved in uh, in the software development field Uh, but since i did my graduation in mechanical so i always wanted to go in the mechanical related field so i was writing the exams of various psu and uh, uh, finally i could crack the engineers india limited so uh, eil so as they call the short form of engineers india limited it is a navratna psu in oil and gas sector which provides the project management consultancy services to all the major oil marketing companies as well as to other private player in steel fertilizer and energy sectors so i think sir i mean i mean this is really interesting okay sorry to cut but i have some questions regarding your uh, academic background let us cover that part and then probably we'll come to your career part because yeah, you have sure. a very uh, you have already mentioned this engineer india limited and your roles and to me it's very interesting so we we will dig it down okay but before that just i have two questions uh, regarding your academic background so you have mentioned that you have done your schooling from a vernacular medium and then you have cracked the joint entrance so it was a state joint entrance like right in Madhya, it's a state joint entrance okay yes so uh, those days it was state joint in state entrance exam but nowadays they have merged it and uh, i think there is one common exam and uh, that is being followed nowadays Okay, and and you have selected for Jabalpur Engineering College, which is a government engineering college, right? Right, right. So, so being a hometown, I always wanted means uh, so being ah. my hometown in Jabalpur, I wanted to be get admission in that college. And uh, mechanical engineering branch of Jabalpur Engineering College is quite reputed in that region, so that was an aspiration for us to get admission. And yeah, I was lucky enough to get there. What was your rank in joint entrance, if you remember by any chance? uh i don't exactly remember but it was i think in close to around uh, 1200 I, i i don't know if memory is serving right but it was close to 1200 and at that time i mean at your time total how many student appears in state joint entrance approximately what was the number 
yeah so again i am not very sure but uh, couple of lakhs couple of lakhs so couple of lakhs so you become within 1200 and then you got you secured your seat in jabalpur engineering college as a mechanical engineer so by, by by the way what what is your what was your father's profession i mean he was into job business or how it yeah so both of my parents were uh, government school teachers so that is why the importance of education in our family was since we were told since childhood that education is the way forward in the life so yeah so be both so of my parents very true i mean I, in my last interview also if you all have seen i mean in this interview also you were seeing so it's like we are promoting this educational thing so like education is the only weapon to us like to all the student or to all the people from the middle class family to fight the, our future okay so and aditya's parents are teachers i think they are already work they are currently working or they have retired already no no they have re- retired long back okay 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 so both of them were a teacher at that point of time so uh, we can understand being from an vernacular medium he has completed his engineering from one of the best college in the state madhya pradesh state and then he has also cracked uh, the psc so we'll now listen to his career uh, path so so now before going to your career path so you you have mentioned that you have you have done your mechanical engineering right yeah so one of the myth in mechanical engineering is there was no lady in mechanical engineering college at that time so is, was the same situation persist for you also or that was a different story for you so ours was exception because being a government college there are certain percentage of seats which are reserved for female candidates so yeah so in the batch of 80 we were having close to 18 female students so was that kind of inspiration to take mechanical or something in your college no no that was uh, not an inspiration because that was in fact a deterrent because if you compare with uh, other branches in the colleges then still you are uh, the ratio <laughs> like, was yeah uh, like you are guy completely understand so just joke apart yeah now now moving forward so you got your first placement in tcs okay so you got your first placement in tcs in which year third year or fourth year of your engineering so it was close uh, end of third year tcs I, we all know that tcs is in uh, software line okay it it industry but you were doing your thing from the core industry so like mechanical engineering you were mm-hmm. pursuing your education then why you have decided to go for tcs why not for the core industries yeah so during those days uh, our first uh, intention was to secure one job and then try for and explore the other opportunities and tcs being the first company and uh, i was selected in the first company then there was the rule till the time the 100% placement is not covered then you'll not be able to sit in the other companies uh, so yeah so even if there were few other uh, good companies but uh, being selected in tcs i could not participate in the in those placement acha i think if you remember first package that tcs offered as a fresher in your college yeah so it was 2008 and uh, the standard uh, salary package for fresher engineers what tc was offering was around 3.2 lakh 3.2 lakhs uh, in 2008 uh, i don't know why they are offering right now so probably yeah, so i, I fresh- keep getting the jokes that uh, 10 year 15 year have passed inflation has gone so high but still package has moved i don't know 3.2 to 5.2 now or how much i find okay i think i think people are who will be watching this video if they are fresher and if they are applying for tcs you can compare okay in 2008 it was 3.2 now you know what is now anyway so moving forward so now after tcs so when you when you got selected for eil that is engineering india limited so it was through a competitive all india exam right right the subjects you were there in the exam and how you prepared for that so it was totally there were two sections of the exam one was the core domain so if you are applying for mechanical engineering then the mechanical engineering related if you are applying for as a civil engineer then uh, as a civil engineer syllabus so the uh, syllabus was all the four years syllabus of mechanical engineering was section 1 and section 2 was general awareness the general awareness but no other things like no reasoning mathematical aptitude nothing was there yeah so though that time this was the format so they used to have only these two curriculum 
and uh, but uh, nowadays i think all the psu are uh, taking the scores of gate instead of having their indi- individual examination so pattern has changed now so so uh, at that point of time so like how was the uh, thing so like you appeared for the exam then after that when you cracked the written exam were there any uh, kind of interview that they have yeah. conducted yeah so after it? the after the clarification of uh, written examination so they have called us to new delhi for the interview and uh, yeah i think it was the ratio of 4 to 1 that if 100 people have cleared the written examination then finally 25 people will on board 25 people will be on board okay 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 and you are one of them yeah. and what was your first posting uh, in eil so uh first posting i was posted in the project of uh, hpcl so hpcl has done a collaboration with uh, mittal group and they had formed the hpml uh, hindustan petroleum mittal energy limited so i was posted in the one of the greenfield project of uh, hp heml oh, okay. so so now in eil so how was your day so first you have i think you had to go i mean go through a training kind of things and then probably you were put into some project right, right. what kind of what and then after that what kind of project what were your responsibility in the project yeah so it eil was quite an interesting opportunity for me so initial 2 to 3 months were classroom training which was given by the company then we were deployed in the field so heml i have told is the first project and uh, after that i was associated with another ongc project so these were kind of mega project with thousands of crores of budget and uh, huge construction activity so i was from mechanical uh, execution i was a mechanical execution engineer over there so the day was to visit the actually the role of eil is project management consultant so the client which has the project of some construction project on behalf of the client the eil selects the vendors eil designs the project the entire design is engineering design is done by eil and then getting the work done through the vendors and then maintaining and ensuring the quality of that work so these were the major kras uh, in eil okay okay and uh, so now if i ask so after after your training you are deployed to this project so what was your day to day activities so i wanted to understand your day in a life at that point of time yeah so my daily activity starts from <clears throat> the material inspection so whatever material comes for the uh, project so it has to maintain the guideline certain guideline which has been issued so whether the material is fulfilling that guideline or not so uh, i have to do the inspection and certify that yes it does when the uh, so mainly if you see in any construction project from mechanical point of view so there are piping and pipeline those were the major Uh, focus areas from mechanical so there were quite of nitty gritty in terms of the manufacturing process in terms of the material usage even in the uh, if we say steel then within steel there are dozens of grades when what uh, paint you are coating on the pipes so there are various uh, parameters to check the thickness of the films and lot many parameters so uh, when the contractor has finished the job then we have to ensure that it matches all those criteria and then uh, we have to stamp it and then uh, then only when it is certified by the eil the client will release the payment to the uh, these vendors or contractors so mainly this material as well as the process inspection was uh, my daily activity Okay, okay, so you are into core technical activities then. I mean, though it was called project management, but it was not kind of project management management. I mean, you need to, I mean, go down to the technicality of these things, understand the quality mm-hmm. of work, and to approve these things, right? So your approval yes. actually lot of value for the customer, so that based on that they release the payment, right? Yeah. So when I say project management, so this was one part, and then definitely. Uh, getting the work done in the defined timeline and within the given budget that was also on behalf of the ongc or hmel whosoever is the customer was the responsibility of eil 
so that is why the whole soul responsibility come to the uh, pmc company and then it gets the work done from other contractor i understand yeah. and and now so from eil how many people were deployed in your project only you or there are multiple people no no so the complete team there were i think uh, in my first project because the project was uh, not that big so still uh, around 20 to 30 people were there but my second project was a mega project it was at that time i think 2012 13 uh, it was a uh, uh, 21000 crores uh, petrochemical complex which was being built in gujarat so yeah i think from eil side more than 100 people were deployed there so aditya what a very interesting question so like as you mentioned like you your one of your responsibility was to uh, make sure that the project is completing within time right yeah. now in that project in the pipeline project or whatever project you are saying how multiple workers kind of people work right so mm-hmm. managing workers also were your responsibility or it was someone else's responsibility and if you if it was your responsibility how you used to do that because probably you are not accustomed to in that kind of environment right you did your engineering crack the central phd exam and then you are facing this kind of workforce so how was your experience there no so actually that was not a, a direct responsibility because uh, we used to deal with the engineers of uh, the vendor company and they were responsible to get i means uh, to deal with their manpower so our interaction was limited to the uh, engineers of the counterparty so now how so how long you work for eil eil and from which year yes yeah, so from 2009 to 2014 uh, close to 5 years 5 and 1/2 okay, and you joined as and you uh, exit as Yes, so I I joined as management trainee, then got promoted to engineer and senior engineer. So the time I left EIL, I was senior engineer over there. I think in the PSU company, the pay structure is very defined, right? E one, E two, something like that. So you yeah. joined in which and when you retire, uh, I mean when you uh, take the exit from the company, what was your place? Uh, if I remember correctly, so. for management trainee though you they used to offer the consolidated uh, at that time i think around 50k and uh, yeah Perfect. and then once you are uh, completing the uh, training instinct and then you are permanent then the pay scale starts so pay scale yeah had, i think uh, clo i don't exactly remember the numbers but uh, yeah it it was significant jump once you get promoted in the government companies so annually it is 3 to 5% increment but yeah on the year of uh, promotion it's significant significant i understand and, and what was the kind of different facilities or benefits you used to get uh, quarters canteen other facilities yeah, yeah, yeah. benefits was uh, amazing even after leaving the <laughs> government job now i i realize that yeah the kind of benefits those were available so yeah the one of the biggest i would say uh, benefit was the medical care or medical treatment which is given because even if in uh, private sector uh, you are uh, insured to a certain lakhs of rupees Um, but uh, i have seen the cases in government uh, means uh, what psu and government is offering even if the you your dependent your dependent parents anyone is ill and the bill is not a constraint over there and even uh, the best thing is opd is also cared uh, covered which is no where the case so apart from that yes Uh, transportation and accommodation food everything was covered so yeah, a lot of uh, non cash benefits but but you were deployed in the field right on the project yeah. it was i think it should be in a remote place or it was within the city how was the location no so it was not very far from the city so okay. we used to travel means 50 kilometers from the city so we used to stay in city and travel uh, morning evening Oh, okay, great. And what was the office timing kind of thing? Eight uh, thirty to five thirty. 
probably the exam structure might have changed but though the role the job profile the kind of benefits everything would be same yeah the pay structure might have changed but the benefits and other things would be same that is the reason i wanted to understand it in more details and that thanks a lot huh, for bearing with us and uh, because you work there so you will be driving it in the best possible manner so that was the understanding Okay, Adit. Then now let's move forward. So after 2014, when you left this organization, what you did? So since my graduation time, I wanted to do MBA. So I was uh, trying to get admission in some good college, and then I, uh, 2014, I got uh, admission in two good, very good colleges simultaneously: the SPJ in Mumbai and uh, I am Indore. So then it was a uh, as they call it executive mba but it is a full time mba it was a one year program uh, so which was for people having more than 5 years of experience so i could clear that and then i chose that uh, i'll do with i am in door so 2014 15 i did the residential program from there and then from there again i through college placement got selected in a company called bharat forge so Yeah. So since okay. then, I'm con- I've continued with the same organization. Yes. Okay. Okay. So it's been almost eight years, right? Close to eight. So you. So when you joined Bharat Forge from MBA after doing your MBA, and I am Indore is a very good college, okay? one of the best college. I think it's in within top ten colleges in India. So, but uh, when you joined Bharat Forge, now you were in you were in EIL in a technical role. now you are joining bharat forge after mba so what was the difference in role uh, there in bharat forge and in ei so eil it was kind of more technical role and uh, uh, in bharat forge my role was towards more commercial so at that time i had joined the group because 2014 15 if you remember uh, our prime minister has also coined a term make in india so on the same line the company has also created uh, a department within uh, named same make in india to find the import substitute local substitute for the uh, products which currently we are importing uh, the engineering products because the core strength of the company is into engineering so in various sectors uh, aerospace railway oil and gas there are a lot of machineries and components which we are importing as in as a nation so the company decided as a strategy that what all can be offered locally so i joined uh, that group as a business development manager and uh, since then my role have evolved uh, within the company and i also worked with uh, chairman's office for some time and then i was part of a strategic business group which was again Uh, to find out the non core areas where the company can grow so the forging and uh, metallurgy were the core of the company the company was from last 50 years uh, was re- revolving uh, around forging and associated processes but to expand in other areas what other areas can be found out so uh, for that the division strategic business group was created and i was part of that so there were couple of around half a dozen different uh, initiative that uh, started as a shoot out of that of shoot of that uh, uh, project so like uh, electric mobility nanotechnology transmission light weighting so from there gradually i because of my interest i moved towards electric mobility so later it became a different division and uh, as recent as uh, 2021 the company seeing the future opportunities created it as a separate legal entity 
so now it is a, a subsidiary company of bharat forge which is solely focused on the electric mobility offering various solution for electric mobility and uh, the name of company now they call it kalyani powertrain so though i have not changed my job i have not moved but uh, uh, if you see from legal entity point of view so from bharat forge now i move to kalyani powertrain so aditya you have mentioned few very very interesting point huh? i mean so i wanted to understand a little details of all these points but before that if you can just describe a little bit about bharat forge what it does okay what is it mean what is its main business something like that so bharat forge is mainly a forging company when i say forging it is a process of giving shape to metals you can say so uh, the major business are into automotive and industrial sector so uh, for the people who understand little bit of mechanical so the crankshaft is the major part within the engine which is manufactured using uh, this forging process and one other part is front axle beam so those kind of products are being uh, manufactured offered to indian as well as uh, exported and uh, the export has seen significant growth in last few decade for the company and uh, the data says that every truck running on the us road every second truck running on the usa road is having bharat forge crankshaft in it so yes yeah, so automotive is around 60% of the portfolio roughly so all the major name daimler and all the major name in trucking and passenger car industry are the customer of bharat forge for these products and 30 to 40% the uh, similar kind of products used in industrial application so yeah those are products and the market if i have to cover it in short and now you mentioned that ke you as part of your strategic initiative team you were i mean identifying the products which could be replaced by the local products which currently were being which currently are being imported uh, right? so that was the first project but uh, uh the part, the strategic business group was not for import substitute it was for the growth of company in non core areas other than forging what all areas can company can go into a business like what else they can do and i think that as part of that only you were doing this new role that electric mobility right so, so now i am I totally talk- into electric mobility yeah if i if i talk about the first project where you were uh, working on that import substitution part so what kind of products actually being imported and what what kind of substitute we got internally within our country uh, yeah so that would be uh, too technical i think for the viewers but uh, uh, for various industry there are various products so if i take talk about oil and gas industry then during drilling the kind of heavy pumps which are used so various components of those pumps if i talk about the uh, railway and aerospace so uh, uh, there are various again if it, railway there are crankshaft for aerospace there are lightweight forgings not from steel but from aluminium titanium magnesium those kind of forging which were not uh, initially made in india so those kind of products probably plan to uh, localize from, from which countries we- to import those products initially yeah mainly from uh, european countries or us okay, okay and now we in india in, we have that capability to i mean manufacture this kind of product right for few of them yes few of them yes okay but but uh, what do you think i mean that import substitutions how much successful it was how much percentage of import substitution we, we are able to make at that point in time you know so still sco- scope is huge so now now i'm coming to the next part which is very very interesting so now we are focusing on this electric vehicle part so now can you can you explain your current role what you are currently doing because everybody is talking about electric vehicle ola has started their own electric vehicle manufacturing unit or assembling unit in bangalore i believe mm-hmm. so your role in bharat as part of the kolani power train what you are doing here so now my role is into again the various components that goes into electric vehicle power train so the company has lot of products starting from low voltage to high voltage commercial vehicles so into the again the business development the 
the companies which are manufacturing the final vehicle are the customer and various component that goes into their powertrain are the products that uh, we as a company are supplying to them what is the meaning of powertrain if you can dis- i mean describe so a powertrain yeah so simply uh, the propulsion that runs the vehicle the complete architecture that runs the vehicle so engine plus transmission so that is for ic engine definitely but when it comes to electric vehicle the, the, the motor battery and the if there is transmission that replaces all those engine and other parts is the powertrain so so aditya so now as part of kalyani powertrain uh, so what all components currently they are manufacturing yeah so uh, for different segment there are different products so for two wheeler three wheeler products uh, segment it is a low voltage it is called low voltage segment around 48 volt uh, system so even the complete two wheeler is being offered through our subsidiary company and then in high voltage system for commercial vehicles trucks and buses there are uh, various uh, I, i would again use the word powertrain components because if i go too much into technicality it will be difficult okay. for the viewer so i would encourage to visit the website uh, and uh, yeah so uh, have so a glance on the products yes. so so aditya one one another question so like how is the um, i mean what is your role here so is it still business you are still into business development of this particular right. product right so you deal with the vendor companies partner so like uh, for for different kind of business deals understanding their components and then based on their requirement providing the component this kind of work you used to do right currently yeah broadly yes how is the work culture there in bharatpur i understand it is your current organization but still if you can give a little brief okay, so uh, it's a ocean to learn lot lot of uh, uh, different segments the company is catering lot of different products very new advanced technology and uh, the dna of company is innovation what they call and what they believe in so for someone who wants to really learn from a uh, technical point of view as well as from the market point of view as well uh, the company is great great and uh, uh, another one more question is like if somebody wants to let's say apply for bharat forge company so what are the different procedure and in what all stages they can apply can freshers apply how what are the roles they offer to the freshers if you can just give a little bit about that so for freshers there is no restriction on on the what kind of role so he could be associated with any department be it purchase be it sales be it engineering or be it some other department so fresher based on the interest can join the department but if you come with certain experience then definitely based on your past track so if you are coming from a commercial background then maybe sales business development strategy those kind of role and for uh, applying Uh, the company keeps on posting on various portals and uh, uh, even on linkedin uh, whenever there are uh, specific opportunities and uh, the company also has the uh, contact details and email id on which the interested person can send their details and if it matches with certain requirement then uh, they can they will be called for interview i understand i understand and also aditya with your permission can i give you linkedin id in the description so that people who are interested can directly get in touch with you sure sure i'll be more than happy if i can be of any help yeah yeah so what is your current grade or designation over there yeah so currently i am as a senior manager on this business development role okay and and generally how much time people takes to reach to senior manager no it depends on how much of past experience you are carrying with you So, so that's what I'm saying. When they are joining as a fresher. So what is the what is the lowest position? And from there, if they are climbing up to reach senior manager, how many how much year how many years they actually need? I know it varies from person uh, yeah. person to person based on their performance. But still, and on an average. Yeah. So the typical hierarchy that follow, uh, if you are coming as a graduate, then you join as engineer, then senior engineer, and assistant manager. And if you are coming as a uh, management to pass out then maybe you can join at assistant manager level 
then assistant manager, deputy manager, manager, and then you reach to senior manager level. Quite a, quite a good role there. Now we have known all the facts of your life. You have said like, okay, professional life, academic life, mm -hmm. your childhood. So now if you want to understand something interesting of your life or your hobbies, okay, whatever you have done in your past time, what are those? Uh, so if I talk about the interesting events, then definitely there has been some uh, challenging times which has been equally interesting also. So one of the critical and challenging decision was when I was planning to leave the government job and, and decided to move to the private sector. So that was not an easy decision, but uh, yeah, so Do you regret I all, uh, no, I don't. Many people <laughs> ask, but I don't even think in that direction. Right, right. It's very good to know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, means uh, I always believe that there is no right and wrong decision. So there are decisions and then you move on. So, yeah, so in fact, uh, one of the poem which helped me taking this decision and I still enjoy that if you, I think it's a very famous one. You would have also heard about the road less traveled by Robert Frost. So it goes something like that two row diverge in a wood and sorry, I can I could not take both. And then there are various uh, the author very beautifully takes. And in the last he says, then I took the one less traveled and that made the all differences. So I don't know whether I've made any difference or not. But yeah, that is something that I uh, follow. No, 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 your smiling face is saying a lot of things. I think you must have made a lot of difference. Otherwise, this, I mean, it is backed by your smile. And, and I think I think it was a really, really a very great insight. So, I mean, the decision you are talking about, it's a lifetime thing. So, like, people are dying to get such kind of roles. You lift that role. Obviously, you have joined IIM. That was also a very big thing. And then you have joined your current organization. That is also very big. And you have been working there for last eight years and into different roles different leadership roles. So that itself define a lot of achievements that you have achieved. Good, good year. I mean, very, very happy to listen all these things. But, but okay, uh, so from your personal life, Aditya, so you got married, right? And so you have a kid, as far as I know, yeah. right? You, yes. have a, you have a son. Right? Yeah, we call him Raghav. <laughs> Raghav, excellent. So, uh, Mr. Raghav's father, so you, you got married. I mean, your marriage was love marriage or arranged marriage? It was arranged marriage. Arranged marriage, fantastic. You got married. how long you were married? It's close to seven years. Seven years. So, what is your view of arranged marriage? You know, so, I think we would need uh, another long interaction if we have to discuss and debate on this topic. But in short, yeah. So, again, as I have told that, uh, so Let's you, you can. You know, it's, it's, it's always good. Yeah. True. True. Very good, very good, yeah. I mean, I, I really appreciate, I really appreciate all your time. And the last questions I want to ask you, like, if you want to suggest something to the people who are the newcomers, be it engineering, be it uh, B school students, whoever are coming, or be it the people who are having like two, three years of experience and they are actually exploring different career options. So what would be your one suggestion that they, you want to give them? Yeah, so... My suggestion would be little counterintuitive because what we generally listen that we should follow our passion. But uh, I, the people who know what their passion is, they are lucky. But I am not sure what percentage of people really know. And I believe majority of the people struggle to find out what their real passion is. So my advice would be not to get stuck in that dilemma that I'll find my passion, then I'll move ahead. So whatever is available in front of whatever you think you can do, you start doing that. And if you are lucky enough, you will find your passion. And if you still don't find, then as I have said that every decision, there is no nothing right, right or wrong decision. If you are stuck, then you are stuck. But still, if you take a decision and move forward, then that's still better. Mm, mm, right, right. No, no, no. It's a, it's a, it's a really good uh, suggestion. I would say, Aditya, really good suggestion. I, I really thank you. I think we have, you have, you have given me a lot of time over a weekend. I really, really apologize for that because I have taken your family time.
but i thank you for coming over here for sharing your life story for giving your suggestions your your and and also like showing us the different kind of paths that one can take in their career in their life thank you so much aditya thanks a lot man. thank you it's it had been a pleasure and uh, i i hope that uh, your audience will get some value from this is sure sure and, and to my audience if you have any questions i'll put aditya's linkedin id in the in the, in the description box you can go there you can visit the profile and if you need anything if you want to understand something in more details feel free to connect okay yeah thank you thanks thanks a lot man bye bye thank you